here. Everything in this direction out here, we should be able to measure. A few hundred objects would trace these spiral arms very nicely. So that, that's the project on the horizon. Yeah. I got a question now. Um, uh, so I remember reading something uh, recently that where they theorize that a small galaxy is actually currently colliding with our own galaxy right now. Now, yeah. what would that do to your data? It could, it could <laughs> cause kind problems. Of a wrench right. into that. There, people, what people see are these streams. They're very faint. They're basically trails of stars that uh, look like there was a, a very small little galaxy that came too close to the Milky Way, got sort of tidally shredded yeah. into these big long streams, and there have been about one or two orbits, and these streams are all over the place. Uh, yeah, indeed. If that happened, you could get very peculiar. That might motion. give some of the disruption, like that little spur. And yeah, that, it's possible. I don't think that's happening, yeah. but it's certainly possible. I've thought about that, and uh, I, I wouldn't rule it out yet. Have you taken any other parallax measurements near that WOH? Yeah, w 3 oh that one's and right they here. they all have similar uh, radial components? Actually, okay, these three here, I don't know if you can see it. There's a blue one there, it's w 3 oh There's a green one right there, another blue one. And they, those have large peculiar motions toward us. So this section of the Perseus spiral arm does seem to have somewhat anomalous proper motion, or motions towards us, peculiar motions. Oh, yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah toward, more toward the center of the Milky Way. Now, what, the th one thing which I wasn't going to say, but I'll mention it now, was basically we look at all of these objects, and the one thing that does stand out is that all of these young star-forming regions uh, do, do not orbit the galaxy in, in a nice circular fashion. In fact, they're all orbiting slower than a circular orbit would give, by about, on average, 15 kilometers per second. That means they're on elliptical orbits. And basically, they have to be in elliptical orbits and at the highest point in the orbit to be orbiting more slowly, uh, instantaneously. So that's an interesting new finding. We don't really know why. Yet. It might have something to do with what are called shocks and spiral arms and how stars form, but it's totally unclear at this point. OK, one other thing. Is that, sorry? Does that mean that those regions are not bound gravitationally to the spiral arm, that the spiral That's arm right. is only an artifact? Yeah, mm -hmm. they're not bound to that. Spiral arms are sort of, they're waves. They, people think they're waves, and so th material moves in and then out of these waves. Mm -hmm. so you're, you're, they're, they're sort of a small per gravitational perturbation. The biggest effect on the galactic orbits of all these things is the mass of the Milky Way. And actually, once you get out here, it's dominated by dark matter. So, uh, okay, spiral arm pitch angles. This is kind of interesting. The question, the question is how tightly wound is the spiral pattern of the Milky Way? So here the artist has, has drawn a certain you know, openness of the spiral arms. And basically these spiral arms, if you go around once, by the time you get this far out, have made one cycle. Okay. And Basically, that would have what's called a pitch angle or an opening angle for this spiral pattern of 16 degrees. We can actually try to measure that. And we can, for example, draw a straight line between those objects and the Perseus arm. And then compare that straight line to a circle that would go through it, a tangent to a circle. There would be a difference in angle, and that's the pitch angle. And we get 16 plus or minus 3 degrees for this section of the Perseus arm. If that holds for the rest of the Perseus arm, as well as the other arms. It would require that the Milky Way really have about four spiral arms. And actually, if you look in the astronomical literature, even in the news from a year ago or so, you'll see the infrared astronomers working with the Spitzer Space Telescope saying, oh, the Milky Way maybe only has two spiral arms. Mm -hmm. As I said, we don't really know a lot about the Milky Way. Does it have two arms? Does it have four arms? This does suggest that it really has four arms. If it had, if the pitch angle, to have two arms, let me put it this way, to have only two arms explain basically where stuff is approximately in the Milky Way, if you have two arms, you'd have to have the pitch angle be half as big, so these arms could go, they'd be more tightly wound, they'd go around twice by the time you get out there. And you need basically to have an arm uh, about every couple of kiloparsecs based on what we think where things are approximately in the It's kind of complicated. Question? Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe 10 years ago, I thought 
it was established, and I'm not sure if it was observational, but that there were four. And then in more recent times, I had seen where it was two. But then, in, and then even more recent, now it's back to four. What happened in between there? I mean, between that four to the two. Well, the, the four originally probably came, the basic model of Milky Way that's sort of been adopted for the last 30 years comes from a study in the 70s by two astronomers, George Lynn and George Lynn. And they, met, they tried to measure distances, kinematic distances mostly, which I've shown you can be really bad, mm -hmm. by a factor of two in some cases, you know, to, to young star-forming regions, which basically are the things that trace spiral arms the best. And so they could map out in a crude way where things were in the Milky Way and draw lines through them, and they said it looked like roughly four arms. It was what, uh, Perseus, yeah, this, Orion, and Sagittarius? Well, this is the, the Perseus one? arm. The, the Orion arm is this little section between these two arms here near us. This is called the Carina Sagittarius mm -hmm. arm. This is the Crux Norma arm. Mm -hmm. And this is the outer arm. That's how they're named. But anyway, um, so four arms looked like the best bet, but it was always, you know, if you wrap the arms around twice instead of once, you could sort of get these lines, these spiral patterns to pass through, through where, where things were, approximately. So. I think the answer is going to end at four. Right now, we only have a little, one pitch angle of a little piece of this arm, and we need a lot more data. But ultimately, with the, the few hundred objects we're going to get, you know, we'll essentially trace all of this directly. And we'll know in a few years, hopefully, about five years. Okay, well, I mentioned that. Let's see. Here's a bunch of astronomy numbers. This, by the way, so I mentioned that these star forming regions are orbiting slower. In the galaxy spins. That is, they're not in circular orbits. These are the peculiar or non circular vectors for all of these objects that we measure. So you take out circular motion, this is what's left over. You can see all those arrows point roughly to the left. The galaxy spins clockwise when viewed from the North Galactic Pole, and all these guys are going counterclockwise. Hmm. Here are the ones in the Perseus arm that have sort of these big peculiar motions relative to the clockwise rotation. Yeah. 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 So, so it basically still could be going clockwise, but at a slower speed. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. There, there, yeah. yeah. I'm taking out, in this case, 220 kilometers per second orbital speed, mm -hmm. and we're left over with 15 or 20 kilometers per second counter to that. So it's only about 15% uh, you know, effect. It's not a big effect. But it's quite measurable. It's, it's quite interesting. For, star formation and galactic dynamics and spiral density wave theory. Okay, so what we've done, uh, I can't describe in any great detail, is we can take all of these motions and all of the distances and we can try to fit a model, a simple model for the Milky Way. Sort of like making a kinematic distance. And uh, what we can do then is solve for several parameters of Milky Way, these fundamental parameters. One of them is called R0, it's the distance from the sun, which is right there, buried there, to the center of the Milky Way. The other parameter we can solve for is how fast the Milky Way is spinning, regardless of the fact that these guys are slow, orbiting a little more slowly. <coughs> yeah. And it may seem counterintuitive that these guys are orbiting more slowly, but you can still get a measurement for the spin of the Milky Way. But you can. I, I can try to explain that, but it takes a few minutes and some drawings. Basically what we found by modeling all this three-dimensional data, three-dimensional distance and, and velocity data, is that the best fit values we get is that the distance in the center of the Milky Way is 8.4 kiloparsecs, 8,400 parsecs, with an uncertainty of about 600 parsecs, <clears throat> and that the circular rotation speed at the Sun, how fast things go in orbit, how fast the Milky Way is spinning, is 254 plus or minus 16 kilometers per second. Now, this number differs from this number, which is the, the International Astronomical Union adopted value from about 20 years ago of 220 kilometers per second. And it's statistically significantly different. And basically, this is saying that the Milky Way spins about